see that bike right there? That's what a game changer looks like. Game changer. A lofty title indeed for any bike in 2023, electric or otherwise. It's my belief that Transition absolutely knocked it out of the park with their new Relay Lightweight Electric Mountain Bike. To be a game changer, it would have to have Transition's absolutely dialed speed balance geometry and giddy up rear suspension, and the Relay certainly has that. But the Relay has a massive party trick that I think makes it stand out above even increasingly competitive lightweight electric mountain bike crowd. And that is, if you buy the Relay, you actually get a lifetime supply of free takeout. Take out battery, that is. Not only does the Relay have the super slick Fazua Ride 60 motor and the corresponding 430 watt hour battery, but this version is actually a takeout version, which lends itself to some really handy modularity for the Relay. So to take the battery out, it's really, really simple. Just a battery cover with the simple rotating latch at the top. And then you just grab a hold of the battery. There's just a little bit of a lever that you have to pull and it literally just pulls right out. And then the cool thing is to ride the bike in regular mode, you just simply put the cover back in. So having this takeout battery adds some obvious modularity and versatility to the relay, especially given how easy it is to take in and out because it obviously allows you to ride the relay is a regular long travel mountain bike or an electric mountain bike. All right, so I'm here at Baker Creek Preserve, one of my all-time favorite places to ride here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm on the new relay. And if you'll glance down at the indicator, it's completely off because I have the battery out. And this could be very useful to folks like myself who frequently go to places where there's some great e-bike riding, but there's also trails where they're not open to e-bikes. I'm actually on my way to North Carolina. There's an amazing bike park that's basically built for e-bikes. Also some of the best trails in the Eastern United States that are definitely not open to e-bikes. I'm 1.1 miles in up this climb here at Baker Creek. And it just, it literally feels like you're just pedaling a longest travel bike. There's literally no perceivable difference. Motoring up this just the same as what I feel like I would do on a, probably like a Spire. This quick knee jerk is that this thing would be totally rideable as a longer travel regular bike. I was actually able to put a PR on Strava on one of the biggest climbs there on the relay without the battery in. For me, the ability to ride it as a regular long travel mountain bike or an e-bike makes it a game changer. Because let's be honest, e-bikes are expensive. And to be frank, they're cost prohibitive for a lot of folks, especially if they want to still have a nice regular bike, but they're also e-bike curious. It pretty much knocks it out for a lot of folks. Transition have answered that call and created what they call the mountain bikers e-bike with the relay. Most of the first look reviews that I've personally seen on the relay have sort of glazed over this dual purpose use of the relay because they've said things like, is anyone really going to ride the relay as a regular bike, especially when you can ride it as an e-bike? And to me, that's a little out of touch because I hear from people almost on a daily basis in the bike shop who are very interested in getting an e-bike, but they're concerned about the fitness aspect of not having a regular bike. And while I do think some of that can be a little misinformed because they're not aware of what a great workout that you can actually get on one of these, I completely get that concern. The relay takes that off the table completely. And ignoring this bike's modularity would also make the assumption that everyone that would be interested in this bike has access to all e-bike friendly trails. Especially here in the US, that is just simply not the case. Now, here in North Carolina, I have quick access to Canuga Bike Park. That place was basically designed with e-bikes in mind, really big up in basically any variety of downhill trail that you want 
from tech to flow to big jumps. This thing was an absolute blast at Canuga, and it definitely gave me an opportunity to test out the burly nature that Transition is really known for, and it did not disappoint. With 160 travel front and rear, it was more than ready for the task. But then also, there is very close access to the DuPont State Forest and the Pisgah National Forest, and those are completely closed to e-bikes. All right. Here at the top of Burnt Mountain, let's hit this descent like it owes us money. Surprisingly quick to accelerate right there. Man, I love this. I don't get to ride it enough, but when I do, it's never disappointing. Boom, boom. Several back-to-back -back hits. This thing soaking it up like it's its job. But then right there, holding speed, good. Able to still sort of pick the bike up and maneuver it. Super janky section, this bike's not worried about it. Boom! Nice, I love that section. Another super cool feature that just adds to the modularity of the relay is the fact that it has a flip chip. Now this is a geometry adjust, but it's not really for the purpose of slackening or steepening the head tube angle, as much as it is for preserving the bottom bracket height so that you can run either a 29er or a 27.5 in the back. The relay actually comes in a PNW version, which is actually 170 up front with a 38 stanch from fork and 170 in the back with a coil shock. And that version comes as a mullet setup with a 27.5 in the back. Now the cool thing with either configuration, whether you have, as I do here, a 160 in the back, you can still experiment with that 27.5. All you do is use the flip chip and put it in the higher setting to accommodate for that lower bottom bracket height that you would get with a smaller diameter rear wheel. Now I'm not gonna go heavy into all the different builds, but it's super cool that Transition decided to do an aluminum version of this. Your entry point for an aluminum one is $6,700. The starting cost for a carbon version is $8,700. This is the top of the line version that's got full uh, Fox factory. It's got the Crank Brothers carbon wheels. It's, it's got the new Code Ultimate Stealth brakes as well as the super fancy SRAM XX transmission. On all of the models you're going to get either Code or TRP brakes which I think are both excellent options. And you're also going to get Praxis cranks in a 165 mil length or 160 if you get an extra small. I really appreciate the fact that they did not spec this with 170 or even worse 175 mil cranks. I would actually enjoy even shorter cranks but 165 is at least a step in the right direction because you have not lived until you've had a pedal strike on an e-bike. No amount of modularity in the world would matter if this thing rode like crap but it actually rides exactly how you would expect a transition to ride. They're super capable especially to be as burly as they are. They always pedal really well and seem to be relatively lightweight for what they are. And the relay is no exception to that. If you weigh the size medium with the battery in, it's going to slide in right around 42 pounds. If you weigh it with the battery out, this one is sliding in just under 37 pounds. And so for me, the geometry is really dialed on the relay. Probably the question that I get asked the most is, how tall are you and what size? Well, I am 5'9". This is a size medium. As with some of the other newer models, they spec this with a 460 mil reach on the medium. And at my height, I feel like I am perpetually between a medium and a large. And with that 460 reach, it helps me to feel relatively comfortable on the 
this medium. It has an appropriately steep seat tube angle and it has a 64 degree head tube angle. For me personally, I think 64, maybe even 64 five-ish is the sweet spot for a longer travel bike. I think once you start getting much slacker than that, it can become a little bit unwieldy with no massive added benefit. And it still makes it more manageable on less hardcore trails. Now, one key thing that can really make or break an e-bike experience is the motor. I've been initially very impressed with the Vizua Ride 60. It's offering up 60 newton meters of torque. And while that's noticeably less than full power e-bikes that are on the market, I can tell you from experience that the on-trail ride feel feels much more comparable to even a full power e-bike than what the on-paper numbers would suggest. And it would seem obvious that that's probably much to do with the fact that the overall weight of the relay is much less. Therefore, the motor has to do less work. And that for me is the sweet spot of the e-bike experience because you get a relatively lightweight package, but still a really solid amount of torque and umph when you need it to get back up the hill. I personally like that so much better than a bigger, more unwieldy full power e-bike that yes, has a ton of power, but it also feels like a big bike when you're trying to maneuver it around the trail. Now, Transition or Fazua are really the first to offer up this concept, but I can tell you that they definitely have it refined. I am super impressed with the ride experience of the Fazua and the relay. We need to get some of those all boost all the time bumper stickers. How hard are you putting out right now? Uh, 50%. 50, yeah. On the middle power e-bikes, this one included, like you still have to put out. I probably put out on the steep sections, 40%. So yeah kind of riding out this middle setting. Having to put some in, no doubt. It's a very smooth delivery. I actually feel like the middle setting is more usable than maybe what I'm used to on the Shimano EP8. As far as the noise that the motor makes, it's not bad. There, you might be able to hear it. So when the going gets steep, especially if you drop it down into gears one, two, three, I mean, it's going to keep pulling. The cool party trick that the Fazua 60 has, if you will hold up the lever, you'll see the indicator start flashing. You can actually go ahead and make it a few gears harder because it gives you that much more power. It delivers a burst of 100 watts for 12 seconds. So cool. So for range here at Baker Creek Preserve where there's big ups, lengthy downhills, but also did some mixed trail riding. I didn't use boost the whole time, but quite a bit. I got about 25 miles of range with two bars of battery left. So one relatively unexpected, but very appreciated key benefit of having the takeout battery is that you can actually bring this inside to charge it. Consider you're on a trip, your e-bike gets super muddy, just pop this out of the bike, you bring it in your Airbnb or your hotel, charge it up, ready to roll the next day. You never had to mess with bringing your dirty bike inside. In addition to that, these newer lithium batteries are not really intended to be stored in the extremes of temperature. So in the dead of winter, you don't have to bring your whole bike in, just pop the battery out, bring it in. That's gonna help preserve the health and the life of your battery. So to summarize, the Fazua Ride 60 to me offers very impressive power and range, especially in consideration to how little weight it brings to the bike. The ride quality of the relay is exactly what you would expect from a transition bike. I'm glad that they spec'd it with the geometry that they did because I think that it's very balanced. It offers plenty of capability for when you're doing bigger days out, but I've spent a good amount of time also at my local trails that are much more mild and it excels there as well. And because of the modularity of the relay, being able to ride it as a regular bike, but also an e-bike, I really do think that this could be a one-stop shop for a lot of riders. I hope you found this review helpful. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. As always, thanks for watching. Literally not even gonna put my feet down. Right back into it.